Hello everyone and welcome back to the Book Refuge and welcome to my final review and breakdown for Bridgerton by Netflix um, based on the first book in the Bridgerton series by Julia Quinn. So we're here for After the Rain and again this is another episode that doesn't have too much in line with the book but we are going to go through my favorite moments because there were some really great ones and then we'll go over how a lot of things were different, but how a lot of things were set up for future books and how I feel about those because it is interesting how I feel about some of those, right? Yes, it is. It's a thing. So yeah. All right. How about we go through this? So the first thing that was kind of fun is that we get to see a lot more family time. So this will come up a few times. But the first one, um, we actually get to see the mallet. of We don't see it. But there's a mention of Anthony's favorite mallet, which is the mallet of death, which will have a starring role in The Viscount Who Loved Me, um, or hopefully the second season of this. So I'm very excited to see what gets done with that. Um, Honestly, I love any time we have all of the Bridgertons on screen. Like, I understand that that is probably a shooting nightmare and not something that will happen very often, but it was, it is something that means a lot to me. And I think probably a lot of um, book fans because that's our favorite thing. We want to see the family together. Super great. Um, then we have some interesting stuff with Marina and Philip Crane. And so we find out that Daphne was successful in getting contact with the Crane family, um, but we got in contact with Philip, who is the younger brother to George. Um, George was, uh, fought, he was a soldier and he ended up dying on the front lines. But before he died, quite dramatically, I might add, he was halfway through a letter back to Marina to ask her to be his wife. And so um, Marina, believing that she has aborted the child or caused herself to have a miscarriage, even though, you know, looking back at this, we can see she even says, like, I didn't feel anything. And it's like, from how things are going, you were at least two, three, even longer months along by now, and you would have felt something. So that was kind of a hint that maybe nothing happened. But before we find out for sure... We have Philip offering to marry her and do the duty and give her a home and a respectable marriage. And she is so convinced that she wants a marriage of love, which I'm not going to lie, is kind of a whiplash because she was willing to trick this perfectly good man into marrying her. And then this other good man who is the brother of the man she loved is willing to do right by her. And now that she's not pregnant, she's like, whatever. Well, the thing is, you're still ruined honey, and it sucks, and that is a whole different conversation about what's fair in regards to ruination, but you are still ruined, and why not be with someone who is now the title holder and will give you a place to live? So more on that all later, but it, it obviously needed to be mentioned that we get to see Sir Philip, who um, has his own book later, <laughs> To Sir Philip with Love, and it was really great to see him and it, it, it did go kind of how I expected it would go um, in regards to meeting him and everything because it was said that there was a Sir Philip who was cast and so we were going to get to see how that all played out. Um, I did really like getting to see Penelope and Marina kind of make up and she apologizes to Penelope and Penelope, you know, forgives her um, and I'm glad that we had that closure um, because though Penelope had to make some, you know, she had done her best to warn Colin, she really did care about Marina and feel bad for her. And so I'm glad that that kind of ended that way. Um, then another moment is we see Daphne finding the letters that Simon had written to his father, which earlier in the season, I didn't call it out in my reviews, but we saw his stack of letters that he found that his father had never opened them of Simon telling his father, you know, all of the accomplishments he has done and how he's working on his speech and trying to become the Duke that he wants to, to impress his father and his father never opened them. And so 
that is another reason why, you know, if his father would have paid even the slightest attention to Simon, things could have went so differently, but he was a jackass. So I love Daphne finding that. And then in conjunction with Daphne being there for Colin to explain that he would have done whatever he could have for her if she would have just told him the truth. Um, and instead she like lied to him and tricked him and just Daphne kind of hearing that and realizing that maybe Simon just wants to be loved for who she is. And yeah, it, it kind of like shocks her a little bit of like, you know, I really wanted to say to her is like marriage is long. You have just started. And who's to say that instead of if we weren't like all trying to pile drive on to Simon that he needs to do his duty or whatever, that things might have come more naturally. But instead, we kind of like sabotaged ourselves right at the jump. And that was really sad to see. But I like that she finds those letters. Then um, we get to have family time with Francesca and we get to see Simon with the little kids, which is great because that is something we have not got to see. Some of the fun most fun scenes in the Duke and I are when Simon is with the entire Bridgerton clan and is just like overwhelmed by their goofiness and fun. We didn't get to have the float on the river that happens in the books and both Anthony and Simon end up in the in the river in the book and it's just really funny. Um but I love getting to see that. Um Simon's still really sticking to the fact that he doesn't want to have kids just because he's good with kids. And Daphne kind of saying, like, you know, that's not why I mentioned the kids, but okay. Um, then the Hastings Ball, which this has a big book significance because from now on, the Hastings Ball is something that happens. I can't remember if it's the start of the season in the future or if it always does end this season. I think it does always end the season. They'll throw this big party at their house. So we definitely will have more moments at the Hastings Balls in the future. Um it will actually be where quite a lot of events go down, as it were, which is kind of fun. So that's a call-out moment to me because this Hastings Ball, though they do some, like, really weird stuff with it and have it, like, rain on everybody and not like they wouldn't have a ballroom inside as well. But symbolism wins! Symbolism wins the day and we have to have a crazy rainstorm, but it does lead to a couple things. First, I really like before the rain starts where Lady D kind of calls Simon out and is like, you're going to let your pride ruin everything. And you have the chance at pure happiness and a good woman and a family. And you are choosing to spurn it to spite a dead man. And your pride is going to ruin you. And I really love that honest talk that we have. I think it's really beautiful and powerful. And I love that Lady Danbury had one last oomph to put in. Because then it leads to the random rainstorm happening and Lady D kind of shooing everyone out of their house because Lady D is boss and she can do that stuff. And Daphne says to Simon, she really puts it all out there how much she loves him. And I love that she does this. And I really love that she says, like, he made you believe that if you weren't perfect, you weren't worthy of love. And that is absolutely not true. And if you need any further proof, just look here because I love you, all your imperfections included. And basically, like, if it's just you and me, like, I still love you and I'm making my bid, you know, and I really, really like that. Um, he doesn't say anything in that moment, but I really enjoyed it. And so then it leads to the final big call out that I'll have before we get into some of the changes is he comes to her room and he says, he's like, I don't want to be alone, you know, and he finally talks because that's going to be in my complaints is that this Simon doesn't talk at all. Whereas like in the books, just because he has a stutter does not mean he didn't talk. Like Simon talked all the time to Daphne. Like they talked way more than this freaking show had them talk to each other. Ah! But he finally puts it out there where he's like, you know, let's see how it goes and I don't want to lose you and just all the right things. And then they make love and he doesn't pull out and we're like, again, Lady Danbury, or not Lady Danbury, Lady Whistledown coming over the voiceover to say, thank you, Lord and, or Duke and Lady Hastings for that spectacular 
finish to the season because we just love using finish whenever someone is coming. It's a thing. So it's really beautiful. And now we're going to talk about the things that changed because even the epilogue, not what it should be, but that's all right. So, okay. The things that bugged me, and this is kind of the case of what happened in the last episode, where we are stretching out this tension to last for the rest of it. Because with any good TV show or movie, you can't have a conflict be resolved too soon. So we have them, you know, I mentioned my favorite parts, but there's a lot of struggle in between there and then. Like, they're still talking about their marriage being a ruse and that he's just going to stay through the end of the season and they're going to go separate ways. There's a lot of him refusing to talk to her, of them not being in the same room as each other. And it just drives me crazy because it's not a Simon and Daphne thing. Like, they, they may have had miscommunication for what was happening with sex but these two talk to each other all the time and again I think part of that comes from them not having done a friends to lovers they did an enemies to lovers and because Sam Sam Simon and Daphne talk to each other all the time like Julia Quinn is the queen of dialogue and she just like they talked all the time and so there was this yawning chasm between them during the time that they're not speaking and I've said this in the last one it's a very short amount of time where they don't talk to each other that is drawn out for effect and even once they're talking to each other like they get down to business and Daphne um there was just some things that Simon didn't say that I really wanted him to say. Like there's one particular line where he says, he's like, I don't want to live my life in spite of my father. I want to be with you, you know? And, and he says all these romantic things. And Daphne is just like, are you sure? Like when they're doing it sh and she knows he's getting close, she's like, are you sure? Cause like, you don't have to, we don't have to do this today. And Simon has said before they have sex, he's like, I can't say that I'm excited about a kid yet because I've spent my whole life that I won't have one, but whatever this child is, like, it's going to be half of you. And like, I know that I will learn to love our children because of you. And I'm not going to think about my father anymore. And to me, like he just needed to talk more. <laughs> and it's just a struggle I had through this whole season is him being an isolated person to show his stoicism. And I think that it, just took away a lot of the chemistry that I wanted to see between the two of them. I really wanted to see that. Um, stuff at the boxing match. So we see Sienna and Anthony kind of have a last hurrah where they are stealing glances and they fuck underneath the stands at the boxing match. Very risky, folks. Very risky. Um, and then he... We see them in her room later. And then, in fact, he invites her to the ball and is like, you know, he asks her to be with him. And this was going, like, too far for me. I wish they had left it before and not had them sleep together again and her still stay with her protector. Because I agree. And my friend Justin said this. Um, I agree that we're showing him be too in love with someone else. And... Though I do like how it ends at the very end. I feel like we already did that. Like, I feel like the damage that needed to be done by him being with Sienna and breaking up was already done. And so to read it one more time and have him be, like, crying when she says it can't happen was just too much for me, right? It was too much for me that he is so deeply cared for this woman that he was willing to... Because he would never do that for his title. Like, he would never... Anthony Bridgerton... And it's not because he's stuck up or a bad guy. He just would never have gotten so involved with an opera singer that marriage was an option. Like, Anthony, he had affairs. He had trysts. He was a caring lover. He was a good man. But he never made that line gray. And so, I just... I don't know how a lot of Kate Sheffield stands are feeling from what I've seen they're pretty annoyed with it all. Um, and I can't say I blame them. I mean, I'm a Kate stan. I've been accepting of this storyline because I really like Sienna. And I like what her storyline had to say. I just don't like how involved Anthony was with her and how much feelings he had for her. It was, it was hard for me to see. Um, 
Wrapping up Marina, I really did like the scene she has with Lady Featherington when, so Marina realizes she's still pregnant, and so we have to call Sir Philip back, um, because now she does need him. I don't like to see Sir Philip used that way, but that's the guy's story. He gets used by a lot of people. Um, and I like that she and Lady Featherington kind of have this, like, tete-a-tete, where she's like, how do you make it work in a loveless marriage? And she's just like, you find small things. And eventually the small things add up to being enough. And sometimes you might even like the person. And I mean, that is obviously foreshadowing to a lot of things that will happen in the future, maybe. But I like that we got to see Sir Philip, as I said. Um, and we can definitely see that there are rocky roads ahead for this couple. I don't know how much in the future they will show us of them. I don't know that I want to see more. Um, I don't know how Sir Philip and his love interest of the future will come about, like how we'll do that because Marina is somebody else's cousin than she is in the book. I've said that she's a Bridgerton cousin in the books and in the show she's Featherington. Um, and that brings up the Featheringtons. Like I am pretty sure that all of the Featherington plot is all added for this story. Um, which, minus the Marina part of the Featherington plot, I didn't mind it. But I'm pretty sure Lord Featherington isn't dead. Like, I don't think that he's dead. At least not in the beginning. Um, and I do know that some of the other Featherington sisters will, like, they... Yeah, I won't talk about that. We, we'll just stop. Um, a big thing that we'll mention, a couple big things. So Penelope and Colin have some final moments. Colin decides to go on his tour, um, which is really heartbreaking for Penelope, but also um, it's a good thing. It makes sense why now would be the time for him. But I really don't like what was done with Colin at all. I don't think I like the actor that was picked. I mean, I like the actor. I don't like the portrayal of Colin that was decided. That isn't completely up to an actor. Obviously, he has to do the lines which are laid before him and have the storyline that is set before him. And I don't like it. He wasn't Colin to me. I've said this in previous episodes. He wasn't funny enough. He wasn't eating all the time. He wasn't as supportive of a brother as I wanted to see. And him being taken in by Marina made him look weak and not the clever man that he is. Um, Colin is a steadfast, wonderful brother that in the first three books always has the right thing and a helpful thing to say to his siblings in a time of need. Um, he is supportive and loving and funny, and we got to see so little of that. It was frustrating for me because uh, Colin is my favorite Bridgerton man. He's my favorite Bridgerton man. Um, and I was disappointed. Um, Penelope, it is revealed at the end that she is Lady Whistledown. So I love that she was revealed. I didn't know how I felt, but as I was watching it the first time and you see the figure and I was like, oh my God, are they going, is she going to, is she going to do it? And she takes it off and it's her. And so now we know that she's the one who outs Marina, which is part of the reason why she's weeping so hard to Eloise, because that was a tough thing to do. Like she knew that she was betraying one friend to save another friend. And for her to be told that her infatuation with Colin is silly. And for him to say that, you know, like, it's not time. Like, that's the thing. Like, it's not time for Colin or Penelope to have an HEA yet. But I absolutely love this actress. I cannot wait to see what she does in the future. And I like that they showed us who it is because since this is a book series, there's no way it could be kept a secret after that. Like, I would guarantee that if they hadn't shared who it was, that people who um, haven't read the books would go find out. So I feel like it was a good call because I think it will be fun to see what stuff she's around for and what she's not, which is a game that I know a lot of people reading the books for the first time like to play is like, who is Lady Whistledown and how are we going to figure her out? And it's really fun once you know who it is and you do a reread to start to see what the clues are, because definitely in the first book, 
even Julia Quinn wasn't sure who it was. And so when she decided, she had to go back and make sure that it could be Penelope. But definitely, even upon my reads, in books two, three, and four, you can see the hints once you know who it is. Um, I don't know if people who guess who it is before that, like, honestly could tell, but it's a thing. Um, so yeah, I like that they showed us who it was because I feel like it wouldn't have stayed a secret anyway. So best to just, while people are binging it and not really like, oh, who's Lady Whistledown? Like you're telling people at the end. And then in the future, we can just be like, you know, they can have her identity be in danger a couple times. That'll be cool. And then when it finally gets revealed at its proper time, we will have seen it and not have it be like, oh my gosh, there's no way it could be her. Like, I think we're going to get to see the seeds laid. Um, final things they changed. So a couple things that did irk me. So Daphne, we have a little bit of an epilogue at the end after um, Lady Whistledown reveals herself to be Penelope Featherington. Um, we see Daphne having their first child and the first child is a boy. So, I know that they probably have symbolism reasons for this happening, and maybe they didn't want to skip ahead to, because the epilogue that happens in the book, it skips ahead like five years, and so Daphne had a boy, is, our, is their fourth child is a boy, um, and since we're probably only going to have a small time jump in the show, I can understand why they didn't want to skip ahead to come back. But their first child is actually a girl, and they do name her an A. Um, I believe it's Amelia. I think Amelia. Um, and so that means we're going to have a child with an A name who, like, isn't real. And I guess they're just like, it doesn't matter. We can do it. But I think it would have been just as powerful if they have a baby and it's a girl. Because then Simon doesn't have to feel, like, weird about it at all. He'd be like, oh, it's a girl. This is so exciting. Um... But I know there's a power behind him having a boy and then being like, yes, this boy is going to be loved. And no matter who he is or, or, or what impediments or differences he might have, he's going to be loved by us. But it just irritated me that they had to have it be a boy instead of a girl when like, didn't it, the symbolism was him having a baby because it's a risk every time they have a baby well not a risk because he's supposedly over that now um but he again in the book says I can't say I'm enthusiastic about having a child but I want to try for you and I feel like if it's a girl and in the books they have three girls before they have a boy that that's really exciting that he can be like oh, it's a girl like yay and then by the time they have a boy he fully is like it's okay to have a son like I'm ready for it so I don't know that's my opinion on it um it just seemed weird that we threw in that we threw in a, a boy first but all right well that is my thoughts on the final episode I do plan to either do a live show talking about all of my feelings in total, maybe with a few friends, maybe, um, or else I will do a like overall wrap up and then things I hope to see in future seasons. Um, that could be really fun. So we will see about that. But otherwise, this has been so much fun. This was a lot to do all in two days. Um, but I'm so glad that I did. And thank you if you've made it all the way to this episode. Thank you for sticking around with me. Um, if you have been really interested in the Bridgerton and what it does for you, I actually have a historical romance book club that I do with my dear friend Crystal. And it's called the Rake Appreciation Society. And for the month of January, we are actually reading some Julia Quinn's from her other backlist. So we are going to be reading the Two Dukes of Wyndham, which is a duology that actually is a concurrent duology. So there's The Lost Duke of Wyndham and Mr. Cavendish, I presume. I've actually started my rereads of these. Um, and so if you would like to check out some more Julia Quinn, you definitely could jump into our book club for this. I will have the link down below to our Discord. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll also see more information about it. But if you want to explore more Julia Quinn and have more deep discussions about um, historical romance and just what it does for the romance genre and yeah, just definitely come and check us out. It we would love to have you. 
Um, as well as I have tons of other content about other historical romances, about other books by Julia Quinn and authors like her. So thank you so much for watching this. It means so much that you are here. Make sure you subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.